Alrighty, so we're talking Algebra 1. This is technically 3-6 from our book about arithmetic sequences. Um, and then I believe it brings in some geometric sequences as well. And you'll kind of see what we mean by sequences, basically a uh, counting pattern. So what are we counting by? Um, adding and subtracting repeatedly, or even if it gets geometric, would be multiplying and dividing repeatedly. Um, let's kind of take a quick glance at how we would approach this IXL P.4, and then that'll give you an idea of what we mean by sequences. So it asks for the first three terms of the sequence defined below, where N represents the position of a term in the sequence. It says start with N equals 1. So that could sound intimidating when it throws that out to you, and then it also gives you... Um, an expression down here as well. All it means is whatever they tell you to start with, that's going to be the thing that plugs in for in right off the bat. Here, we'll do this. So if I plug in 1 there, what am I going to have? Well, I'm going to have negative 8 times 1 instead of times n, then minus 8. Remember, order of operations, that multiplication comes first. Negative 8 times 1 is still negative 8. Minus 8, again, gets you negative 16. So that's what I'm going to put in my first box then. Okay, well, it said 1. What do I do from here? It's going to be the same idea, except now we're going to 2. So if I replaced n with 2, now what am I going to get? That's going to be negative 16 minus 8. And I would get negative 24 for my second box. And then I'm going to do the whole thing again, except I'm going to plug 3 in. Negative 8 times 3 minus 8. That's going to give me negative 24 minus 8 again. I'm going to get negative 32. So if you notice here, I'm basically counting down or subtracting by 8 over and over again. Fantastic. All right, something else we could see. Um, it's going to be the same type of problem, I believe, for the entire thing, but different expressions that they give you. So for this one, we have an exponent that's going to change. So let's take a look at what happens here. So at the start, I'm going to have 2 times 3 to the power of 1. And then I'm going to have 2 to the 3 power of 2. And if you notice, I'm just setting these all up first. 2 times 3 to the power of 3. So remember, order of operations. Think about PIMDAS. The exponent comes first. So 3 to the power of 1 is still 3. Times 2 is going to give me 6. For the... Second one, 3 squared is 9. And then I have 2 times 9 would give me 18. And then for this one, 3 to the third power. I'm going to even double check that one. 27. I'm going to have 2 times 27. And that's going to give me 54. So now that I found my 3, let's type those in my three boxes. And if you notice, I'm not counting up by six this time or by three or anything like that. What I'm doing is I'm taking my first one, I'm multiplying it by three, and then it would be like I multiplied by three again. So that's kind of what we mean by geometric, even though it doesn't use it in the title here. That's a geometric sequence. Okay. So basically anytime you have that exponent like that, that's what you're running into. Let's jump ahead a bit and see if we need to discuss any further. 49. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this one, although it's very similar to what we started with. I'm going to have 10 times 1 plus 10. I'll go down here now. 10 times 2 plus 10 and 10 times 3 plus 10. 
because the in is something that's being multiplied and not in an exponent, this is going to look like we're adding or subtracting over and over again, meaning an arithmetic sequence is the name of that. Kind of like arithmetic. It's pronounced a little different. 10 times 1 is 10, plus 10 again is 20. 10 times 2 is 20, plus 10 again is 30. I think we can see what's happening here. 10 times 3 is 30, plus 10 again would give me 40. All right. So for something like this, before I skip ahead, just so you guys know, you'd plug in 1, plug in 2, plug in 3, just plug in 4 after that. All right, this one's a little bit uh, different. We'll take a look. Find the fifth term of the sequence below, where n represents the position of a term in the sequence. So let's kind of think about that. If I'm finding the fifth term, I don't need to plug in one or two or three or anything like that. I'm just going to go straight to plugging in five. Minus one is part of my initial um, equation given now. Five minus one. That's basically treated like, just so you guys know, that's treated like parentheses, even though we don't see it when it's all in that exponent. So that happens first to give us four to the power of four. 4 to the power of 4 is 256. So let's see what we end up with there. Awesome. So that's about the extent of the difficulty there. Just keep order of operations in, um, in mind, and then use whatever term it looks for, or list them all if it was like the previous questions. Hopefully that helps. That's going to be, like I said, just to repeat, 3-6 as our lesson. All right.